how to speak a foreign language with confidence. There are many things you need to master when learning a foreign language. Vocabulary, grammar, reading, writing, listening, speaking. All of these different aspects of the language have to be learnt in tandem. You can't really focus on just one at a time and separate them out into individual parts. However, you can split the learning process into two major categories. Studying and practice. Whilst studying is something you can do quite easily by yourself in the safe comfort of your own home, practice is something you can really only do effectively with another person, specifically if it's conversation practice. Of course, you can do plenty of practice without another person, but a face-to-face -face conversation in the native language is one of the best ways to build proficiency, increase confidence, and concrete language knowledge firmly in your brain. The only trouble is, it's so scary. Let's start by looking at a few methods for practicing your language skills that don't involve staring blankly in horror at a foreign person as they speak at 100 miles per hour. YouTube, radio, reading, writing. YouTube. YouTube was my holy grail when I was studying foreign languages at university. You can use YouTube to immerse yourself in the foreign language, and you can watch videos on any topic in the world. The way I used YouTube was to improve my listening comprehension skills, and also to improve my pronunciation skills by mimicking the native people speaking in their own languages. Depending on what YouTube shows you watch, it's almost like you are a fly on the wall listening to foreign languages. The only difference is you have the enormous benefits of being able to pause, rewind and even slow down the speed of the audio. You can watch the conversations again and again until you understand every little bit. You even have the option of adding subtitles on some videos. As well as YouTube, all the major streaming services now offer the option of watching shows in different languages. What an age we live in. Radio. The radio is another good resource that you can use to improve your listening comprehension skills. The good thing about listening to foreign radio stations is that you can do it whilst you're out and about. So you can turn any situation into a language learning opportunity. Going for a walk? Just download a foreign language radio station's app and listen as you wander. It doesn't matter if you don't understand it all at first. Just listen out for any words or phrases you recognise. The more you listen, the more you will be able to understand. Reading. Reading is a great way for beginners to enrich their vocabulary and start to improve their comprehension skills, because you can go at your own pace. Even if you only work on one sentence per day, you'll soon start to see vast improvements in your ability to understand the language. There is such an array of reading material available at our fingertips now, thanks to the internet. Online newspapers, magazines, blogs, even Wikipedia articles are all free resources that you can devour. You don't need to do anything besides read, and have a dictionary handy to check any unknown words. And you can even find that online if you head to www.wordreference.com. You'll be amazed by how much you can learn from just one sentence. Writing. Writing is one of the best ways to improve your active vocabulary, along with having actual conversations with people, but we'll get to that in a minute. If you've been learning a language with one of my three-minute languages courses, you'll be familiar with the technique I call building motors. That's where you build some phrases and sentences that you can practice again and again so that when you come to actually use them in conversations, they come out fluently and you can reel them off without having to think. Writing is a very creative process and when you involve the creative part of your brain, information gets turned into long-term memories much more easily. It doesn't matter what you write, it's the actual act of writing that makes it so useful. In my own language learning journey, I've done all sorts of writing. I've written poems, translated song lyrics, 
written very short stories, and just written a sentence about something I did that day. Poems are always very useful because you have to search for words that rhyme, which is always good for learning synonyms. It also makes you think about the structure of the language and how you can flip sentences around. Personally, I would definitely recommend keeping some sort of foreign language diary in which you can write a daily sentence about something that you did or even something that you'd like to do. This is because you'll end up learning lots of vocabulary that you'll actually use in your daily life. Finally, another amazing form of writing is to find yourself a pen pal. My French pen pal was invaluable for me. I found her on a website that specifically found pen pals for people. I started off by emailing her once a month or so, and she'd reply. Marianne was a great pen pal, as she would correct any errors I made, so I was constantly improving every time we chatted. Conversation practice. So here we are. I tried to hold it off for you as long as I could, but now we must face it. Having spoken conversations with native speakers is, for a lot of people, one of the toughest parts of language learning. Yet for most of us, it is the ultimate goal to be able to converse at ease with native speakers. Over the years, I've taught many people to speak a foreign language, and as a rule, the people who were more willing to speak to native speakers progressed at a much faster pace. The biggest hurdle to overcome, though, is fear. Even if we can write messages to native speakers and read their replies, it doesn't make it any less scary for us to talk to people face to face. But why? I'm not ready. So often I hear the excuse, I'm not ready yet. But let me just tell you to get that excuse out of your head now. If you have the excuse, I'm not ready now, you'll still have it in a year's time. Or in 10 years time, it will have turned into, I'm not good enough or I'm rubbish at languages. The fact is, you'll never be ready. There will never be a perfect moment to start having conversations. In fact, that's not entirely true. There is a perfect moment, and that moment is now. Even if you're only on lesson 1A of 3 minutes Spanish, you can still start speaking to real-life people. Just a simple, es fantástico which means it's fantastic, to a waiter in a restaurant who has asked you how your food was, is enough to break down part of the fear barrier. But how do we jump completely over the fear hurdle and build our confidence up? The biggest confidence killer is overthinking. If you think too much about what may or may not happen once you've spoken in a foreign language, you'll start to push yourself down a corridor of fear and you'll see no way out. They'll say something back to me and I'll have no idea what they're saying, is what most people say to convince themselves not to speak. And yes, it might happen. In fact, yes, it will happen. It definitely 100% will absolutely happen without even the tiniest shadow of doubt. You will say something to somebody, they'll reply to you in a foreign language and you'll have no clue as to what they've said. It will happen and not only that, but it will happen again and again. It'll happen 10, 20, 30 times, but so what? The consequences of not speaking to somebody in a foreign language far outweigh the consequences of not being able to understand what has been said back to you. Every time you hear a reply that you don't understand, your brain will be carrying out thousands of processes to try and make it easier next time. Each time you listen to a response, even though you may not be able to tell, you are improving. I never, ever, ever thought that I'd be able to understand somebody speaking full speed in Spanish. However, now I can listen to somebody speaking Spanish and understand them, and it no longer even sounds to me like they're speaking at 100 miles per hour. But I'd have never reached this level had I not forced myself to speak in those early days. And I literally had to force myself. And I bottled out the first few times. There is something different about listening to a video of somebody speaking and listening to somebody speak directly to you. It must be the added pressure, but it really puts you in panic mode and you just want it to be over. But please do it. Ways to increase confidence in speaking a foreign language. Perfect your grammar. The more readily verb conjugations flow off your tongue, the more willing you'll be 
to have a go at speaking. You won't feel like you're in such a state of panic if you know that you have the keys to be able to talk your way around anything, even if you don't quite understand the reply. So brush up on your basic verb conjugations, the past, present and future, and try to get to grips with the more complex ones, such as the subjunctive, conditional and the compound tenses. For me, knowing I was able to conjugate myself out of any situation really made it less scary for me to start speaking. Keep expanding your vocabulary. Obviously, you can know how to conjugate verbs forward, backwards and inside out. But if you don't know enough verbs, those conjugation skills will be next to useless. Learning vocabulary is a never-ending task. But if you know the 100 most used words, that's a great start. The more words you know, even just passively, the better your comprehension skills will be. Learning synonyms is a great thing to move on to once you feel like you're a bit stagnant in the vocabulary learning world. Take any common word and search a thesaurus for three or four synonyms and then try forming your own sentences using those words. For instance, try searching for bueno, which means good in Spanish, and you'll find chévere, which means great or awesome, guay, means cool, and asombroso, means amazing. Once you've learnt some synonyms, try searching for antonyms, that means words that mean the opposite. For example, an antonym of bueno is espantoso, which means awful. So that was two practical things that you can do in the long term to help you gradually gain linguistic confidence. But what about non-learning related things? Trick yourself into being confident. There are two things you should start doing every time you even utter hello in a foreign language. Make your voice sound confident and make your body look confident. The next time you say hola to a Spaniard or bonjour to a French person, say it confidently. Don't mutter it quietly and then look away. Say it loud, clearly and with a smile. Maintain eye contact until the other person has said hello back to you. All of this is a great way to start tricking yourself into being more confident. Try it. You'll be amazed at how different you'll feel after whispering a shy hola to somebody and then giving your friendliest, loud, clear hola to somebody. If you start taking small steps to tricking yourself into thinking that you're more confident than you actually are, you will gradually start to become more confident in reality. Try saying hello to everybody you see and say it cheerily, clearly and with a beaming smile. Another body language trick that you can use to make yourself feel confident is to stand tall with your shoulders back. Don't slouch or try to hide yourself away. Make yourself appear open and friendly. Once you've mastered a cheery hello, add to it. Try saying, hello, how are you? In whichever language you're learning. Obviously, you don't want to ask how are you to everybody you meet, so save it for when you walk into a shop or a restaurant. Hola, como esta? Remember, say it clearly, slowly and loudly, with a big smile across your face. Now that last bit is how you should approach every conversation you have. Speak clearly, slowly and loudly. There's nothing worse than rushing through a question you've rehearsed over and over, only for the other person to say, what? With a confused look on their face. Because then you have to say it again, except this time you feel embarrassed and unsure of yourself. So you're probably not going to make much sense the second time round either. Speak clearly, enunciate and go slow. Because it'll make it easier for the other person to understand what you're saying, or at least what you're trying to say. Start out simple. You only need a few good interactions under your belt to make yourself feel much more at ease with starting up a conversation in a foreign language. Every good interaction will take you up a notch or two on the confidence scale. So get a few easy ones in early on. Think of some questions you could ask people that aren't too taxing. More importantly, try and do it away from your friends and family. Let me just go on a little tangent for a moment. Having an audience 
will make you more nervous. So if I were you, I would do my first few foreign language interactions away from my travel companions. You'll just feel under pressure to perform well. And if you make a mistake, you'll feel more embarrassed if people are watching you. Take yourself away and do a few practice runs before you perform in front of your family. Just go and ask somebody where the toilet is, what time the restaurant opens, or how much something is in a shop. If nobody is actually reliant on the information, it doesn't matter if you don't understand the reply. Just move on to the next shop and ask somebody else a question. Anyway, once you have done some speaking alone, meaning away from your travel companions, you're ready to try out some interactions with an audience. Again, start out simple. Don't tell your friends or family what you're going to ask because then they'll just be waiting for the answer. For example, if you're in a supermarket, just pick a person and go and ask something like, where are the ice creams? Or do you have any apples? Get as many unimportant questions out of the way as you can, because these will build your confidence and you won't feel under pressure. It also doesn't really matter if you don't understand the answer. Ask as many of your own questions as you can before the inevitable happens. By that, I mean the moment one of your friends or family members asks you to ask something on their behalf. This, in my opinion, is one of the scariest and most annoying bits. When somebody knows you've been learning a language, they will expect you to be their personal translator all holiday. They'll want you to translate every menu and every sign, and they'll want you to find out all sorts of information and organise all the excursions. Or is that just my friends and family? Anyway, That moment will eventually come, and if you've done all the steps I've mentioned previously, you should feel confident and prepared. That doesn't make it any less nerve-wracking, though. Try and find out everything that everybody wants to do in advance. That way you can prepare little scenarios in your head. Take a mini dictionary away with you on holiday, or use an online dictionary if you can get online on your phone. Try and think of what words you might need and write them down in the notes app on your phone. Rehearse a little conversation with yourself a few times and then just go and do it. Don't dally, puff your chest out, smile and remember to speak clearly and slowly. If you sit and think too much about it, you'll get anxious, so just bite the bullet. A nice thing to do is say, please bear with me, I'd like to practice my Spanish. Also, please speak slowly. Say all this before you even start the conversation. Throw in a little chuckle at the end for good measure. The reason for this little sentence is that it will just make sure that the other person speaks to you in the foreign language because they'll know that you want to try. Otherwise, they may think they're being helpful by replying to you in English. Finally, know that you are not alone and praise yourself for little victories. Everyone who has ever learned a foreign language has had the same feeling you have when they started out. So don't think that you're the only one. And give yourself a pat on the back. It takes a lot of courage to try out a language that you're not fully proficient in yet. So congratulations for giving it a go.